I'm Nihongo Gamer, and this is the PXN P50 controller for the Nintendo Switch. Now, this looks like a pro controller, and it has many features that you would expect from a pro controller, especially things like having two back buttons here. Without further ado, let's check it out. It's the PXN P50. By the way, full disclaimer, the manufacturer did send this product to me for the purposes of making this review. I don't have to say anything specific, and they did say that I can keep it at the end of the review free of charge. And finally, all opinions on this controller are entirely my own. All right, it's time to have a closer look at the PXN P50. You can see that it's a very familiar shape. It reminds me maybe of like a cross between the official Nintendo Switch Pro Controller, but it reminds me of the Google Stadia controller for some reason. I've actually never had one of them, but it, it feels, a, it looks a lot like it. Anyway, you've got all the standard stuff you would expect on a Pro Controller. You've got your two analog sticks. You've got your D-pad here in the on the left side. You've got your action buttons here on the right side. You've got your plus, you've got your minus. You've got your home button, screenshot button. On the top of the controller, you've got this standard R1, R2, L1, L2, or as they're called, ZR and ZL. Standard USB-C connector port here, and a little button to reset it when you're synchronizing a sync button, basically, when you're trying to synchronize it with devices. And on the base of the controller, you also have an M1 and an M2 button. Now, these can be programmed to specific buttons using the app, or you can actually just use them to record actual macros in physical real time. But essentially everything works as you might expect. You've got your D-pad, you can do your special moves, you can press all of your action buttons, and none of them are clicky. Now in other videos I have looked at controllers where there are clicky buttons here and there, and generally speaking I like having something like a clicky D-pad but I don't really like having clicky face buttons. In this case, it's it's not really a clicky D-pad, but it does feel responsive. Like the membrane rubber pads on this D-pad are nice and tight. It doesn't have an actual physical click, but the membrane buttons are so tight that it's almost there. And on the right side, it has your standard membrane buttons for these. They feel nice and tactile, like you know that you've actuated these buttons and it doesn't feel stressful to press them. On some things that are actually clicky, you have to push really hard for the actual command to come out. But on this pad, you know, you push quite lightly and you don't, you feel, I don't feel as much fatigue on my thumbs. So generally speaking, you can do your combos as expected. I'm fluffing mine up, but you, generally they work. One thing is that if you do use the shoulder buttons, these feel a lot looser than these buttons here on the top of the controller. I don't know if they're just using the same membranes, but it's not working out so well because these buttons are so much larger. Maybe they needed harder membranes or a thicker membrane. These feel kind of gummy compared to these buttons that are quite nice here on the front. Now, when it comes to combos, I will say one thing is that it's not super easy to get a really nice clean input. For example, on this combo, I need to get a down down input so that I can do a fast fall. And I feel like I'm <laughs> I'm having trouble getting this fast fall to come out because I'm accidentally getting a diagonal left or a diagonal right. Again, it could just be discipline and maybe I need to practice a bit more. Hey, I got it that time. Oops. But what was quite difficult when I was practicing with this controller earlier was when I was pressing double forward or forward forward to do a dash, I would find that sometimes I would accidentally get a jump. So for example, if even if I'm just using the dash button, I'll press forward and dash button, and sometimes I do that. <laughs> like I'm not pressing up. I'm not pressing up. You can see I'm not trying to trick you or anything. You can see with my thumb here on the D-pad, I'm just pressing forward and for some reason he's jumping up in the sky. What I will say is that actually this is quite common even on the official Nintendo Switch Pro Controller. You would think that on the official Pro Controller, which is often a little bit more expensive than the third party controllers, that this wouldn't be an issue. But this happens all the time and this doesn't just affect me in fighting games, but it affects me in puzzle games as well. The design of these handles, as you can see, they come quite far down. They angle a lot like this. You will feel like the whole controller is slightly tilting forwards while you're using it, which means that your thumb is no longer coming directly down on these on the D-pad. What is happening is the whole controller is tilting forward a bit, 
and every time you push down on it, what you're actually doing is sort of pushing up. The other thing about the D-pad is I feel like it's not rolling very smoothly. For example, when I'm like rolling, I'm like down and I need to roll to the left and then roll to the right and then roll back again to the left. It all just feels a little bit unsmooth. It just doesn't feel smooth. Now the P50 also exhibits an issue that I found on other controllers, which is that it skips down when you're pressing neutral. So to give you a zoomed in look, if you're pressing down forward and then you go from down forward to down back, so you're just rolling your thumb back and forth like this, it should go down forward, down, down back. And then when you roll back again, it should go down back, down, down forward. But unfortunately on certain D-pads, which don't know, I mean, maybe the pivot is too low or something underneath here. There are D-pads where you can essentially skip the down input. And that is a problem because what I need is a four down input followed by a down, down back, back input that will do this move. Anyway, moving on, another feature on this controller is that it does have a macro mode. And so these buttons on the back, you could use the app to select what options they do and, and you know you can just choose it to be specifically be this button instead but if you don't want to do it that way you can also use the app to program macros or you can do macros recorded in real time so i'll show you how that's done basically you hold down the correct back button like so then you tap this button and it will go white and then when you're in the game you can actually record an input so for example and then I press the button and it should be programmed. What should happen is that I'll press this button and it will do the super EX move for me. Excellent. So it works just fine. It, record, it recorded my inputs and it plays it back in real time. What was really interesting, however, about these back buttons, and I, don't, I couldn't figure out a way to change it, is that it doesn't actually activate when you press the button. So watch this. I press the button, nothing's happening. I let go of the button. There's my macro. This is not how I would want my macro buttons to work. Instead of pressing a button when you press it, so I press the attack, it does it, I let go, nothing happens. The macro buttons on the back are the opposite. I press the button, nothing happens, I let go, there's my macro. Maybe there's a way to change it, I'll double check again. The next interesting factoid about the macro system is that the app does not recognize diagonal ish, <laughs> diagonal inputs. It's very, very strange, but basically what I've just done in the game for you right here is that I've programmed forward, down, down forward, which is a diagonal. I do this, you can actually see my inputs there in the on the left side of the screen. But when you use the app that is free to download for the PXN P50 and, and the other PXN controllers that can use the app, it doesn't even allow you to put diagonals in. So I tried forward, down, down, forward, and all I got in the app was forward, down, forward. <laughs> like it even it lets you select a diagonal input, but then it doesn't actually come out. Anyway, in summary, for me and the PXN P50, I quite like that it was nice and firm on the D-pad, but unfortunately various things like maybe the placement of the pivot being a little bit too low underneath the D-pad and the fact that it's just a very small D-pad and it's 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 firm enough that actually releasing directions is, is kind of not smooth. And so generally speaking, it's difficult to do technical inputs on this D-pad just because it's just not a smooth feeling experience. As you know, the macro system is weird. At least it does work when I program a macro in and I recorded it in real time, at least they worked. But the ones that you program in on the app, completely, a complete disaster, didn't work at all. And then finally, I guess these shoulder buttons, they're kind of gummy. I mean, maybe that doesn't really affect gameplay that much, but I would like it to be a little, I would like it to feel more defined. At least I'd like to feel as defined as the clickiness, not, they're not clicky, but the tactile feel of the face buttons on this controller. And then finally, I think maybe it would help if these handles were not such a dramatic fall off in terms of angle. It'd be nicer if they were a little bit straighter or if they just did, if they didn't encourage you to tilt the controller forward and away from you, because then you've got that sort of weapon handle feel and then you've got the analog sticks on top of it. I know that that was a thing with the Hori Pad, the Hori Pad Pro 
that they sent me. It had a much more vertical feel, a lot like this one. But again, when you're playing fighting games, all it means is that it just tilts the whole controller a little bit forward and causes you to press the wrong, knee, wrong inputs on the D-pad. But essentially, those are my closing thoughts on the P50. Well, that's about it for the PXN P50. It's a pretty simple controller, but it is technically in the pro controller vein because it does have these back buttons. Be sure to check it out if you're looking for an extra controller for your Nintendo Switch, especially if you need a few extra controllers for things like multiplayer games, things like Overcooked, I don't know, games that you know require more than one person. I don't play them because I don't have friends. Subscribe if you loved it, like the video if you haven't done so already, and comment below. Do you like the controller if it has clicky buttons, or do you prefer it like this with just the standard membrane buttons? If you want to see more controllers for things like your Nintendo Switch, be sure to check out this video next. That's all I've got time for today. I've been Nihongo Gamer. I'll see you real, real soon.